And well, hi, and welcome to Love of the Gamers. No continues, the show where we don't continue. My name is T.C. Inkwell, a.k.a. Tony Inkwell Conti, a.k.a. Dodon Poch, Diojo, Doombringer, because that's what we're playing today. It's continuing the exploration of uh, Shmup Developer Cave's back catalog that's on Xbox 360. We're going to play the 2002 classic Dodon Poch, Diojo. So come back to Bullet Hell and join me as I turn it to Bullet Heaven. All right. We got up in here. Keeping it quiet so far, but all right. So again, I'm playing Dodon Potch, Diojo, Black Label on Xbox 360. Boom, right there. And uh, this one, this game has got a lot of history to it. It was uh, ported originally released on the arcade, later ported to PS2, uh, then later ported to Xbox 360, supposedly supposed to be the best version of it, since uh, the PS2 version had quite a bit of chug at some of the bullet-heavy parts, but uh, it ended up being a complete mess when they released it on 360, because uh, they had, as I mentioned in other streams, illegally copied the code from the PS2 version, and uh, used it on the 360 version, and then Cave themselves stepped in, vowing that they would release a patch for their product, and they developed it. I think it took something like two years to finally get the patch out on 360, but the game is now playable, supposedly. Well, let's make sure I got some music on there. All right. Now again... Uh, Dodon Potch Diojo, a game I've probably played the most of out of any of the cave shooters. Uh, while I've given time to a lot of them, uh, living in a house where we had Dodon Potch Diojo, Astro City Candy Cab. Shout outs to, uh, a Ty Tealens and a Andrew Schwagerell on that one. But, uh, completely amazing game. Couldn't ask for a better game to have in your living room. It was just the morning coffee game. So much that I own it on PS2, and now uh, own it on 360 as well. But uh, again, taking this trip through Cave's back catalog, you gotta be happy to hit the Diojo. Ooh. And again, uh, let me know any feedback, anything from uh, quit dying so much to turn up the volume is all accepted. Oh, well... This is just the warm-up. I'm getting the bugs out right now, so let me uh, go ahead and just die and reset. Or again, I forget since it's a 360 version, I could just do this. There's some quick restart option that I'm afraid to try, or I, I just have yet to try, I guess is it. But... Alright, fucking Diojo. Now I do know quite a few tricks to getting a high score in this game. Again, I'm just playing normal default settings, normal mode. Uh, but Diojo has a, ah, fuck, see that combo, the combo system in every cave game kind of is what differs and ends up ultimately determining how much fun I have with these games is uh, how good I could learn to be with the combo system in the game. Uh, this one uh, has just one of the simplest, straightforward ones where you build that combo in the top left. When it's uh, blue, that means the combo's gone stale, so when it's still counting up in orange, if you get one of these golden bumblebees, like that one right there, uh, it'll times a thousand times however many hits I have on the meter right now. So that was one hit, so one thousand times one, nothing big. But if you get your combo going up in the hundreds and then you get that times thousand, like boom. Like by the end of the first level, you could have a pretty good score probably like first place on the default uh, resets like initials that are on the game when you start Ooh. so again I'm getting back in the swing of things in this game I use less uh, C button auto fire than I do in a game like Mushihime Sama or Ketsui uh, Ooh, I use a lot more of the straight shot also I choose linear shot usually with these games so again I'm just warming up dying on the first level is something that uh, is shameful when you've played as much of this game as I have, but I'm just default going for a death right now to try to reset this. Oh, and this game is still full of bugs. Like for now, right now I'm yeah hitting the start button, but I wasn't able to get it to respond. It does that a lot. 
from a, a lot of menus. It's pretty annoying. But anyway, feel free. Sound off. If I got anybody up in the chat room, like to hear what's going on. A lot of gaming news going on right now. It is a big week in video game land as far as announcements and otherwise because it is the Los Angeles E3 Expo going on next week pretty much uh, every year E3 seems to start a day earlier and uh, right now it's uh, Monday here in Japan so it's Sunday in LA still but they've already had I think uh, Bethesda's press conference, uh, Microsoft just were the first to blow their load, talked about a lot of uh, Project Scorpio stuff, now named uh, Xbox One X. <laughs> the, the great naming continues from the Microsoft camp, where they spent one full and entire lunch break thinking of this name. Let's call it Xbox X. But anyway, again, I'm broadcasting from Japan, where uh, the Xbox One is all but non-existent. I mean, uh, game sales have slowly dipped everywhere over, uh, you know, since the height of back in the days. What have I done? Oh, this is awful. Uh, but uh, with, you know, favor of mobile games and all this, uh, getting a lot more of the market share. But in Japan, yeah, PS4 and whatever Nintendo system usually has... Quite a bit of a presence at the game store, but Xbox One is just a small section, kind of sad in the corner. Yeah, shout outs to my man, Trage 3 MB. I know he's hitting E3. If you haven't checked out already, uh, Wizard World Gaming Evo, these guys are making the world of now, we call it esports, I guess, but it's long been a uh, fighting game community since before that, and yeah, these two uh, companies have really done the most uh, creating annual tournaments in the case of Wizard World traveling tournaments where they're uh, you know going to every city putting up prize money just really great to have a company that is structured and puts together tournaments I, I, I wish there's more of it when I was younger is all I could say not that I can't compete it's mostly guys my age but uh, you know nice having events like that all right anyway getting the bugs out right here now I am ready to do a real run the powers trash 3 MB give me some love yeah see it doesn't react to the uh, the button pressing a lot of times kind of annoying all right oh no already fucking up the combo see I want to wait till these dudes get a little more down here so I can slowly mow them down and the trick is to keep this combo going all the way to that first mini boss where I could collect two Bs. But see, that's about where you fuck it up with your timing. I'd say eight times out of ten I could get it right, but it takes it took a lot of practice. Ooh, okay, 75. Just barely got that one. Little giddy giddy, as they say. Actually, I'll give credit. My man Trage Three MB is one of the uh, better Dodon Poch Diojo players. Again, a frequenter at the Astro City machine that we had and uh, it was often just a high score battle showdown between he and I but not, not to say others weren't on par as well again shout outs to the Andrew Schwagwells and Kento Famicom Noguchis and Ryan Paul Brian Malixi these guys know how to shoot bullets all right, I'm kind of just not doing great with my combos right now, but I'm staying alive and I'm not using bombs. Again, we've been over the rule of bombs. Only pussies use bombs. It's all about hand-to-hand, -hand, face face-to-face combat. Okay, good, I got that one. 55. Not a bad combo for doing awful on this level. Bullshit. Ooh. All right. Now, see, this is an important part of getting the score, too. So this gives me hyper. So if you use this, uh, that meter on the bottom left will slowly go down for me. But it speeds everything up, but gives me a much more powerful shot. And then it builds up your combo like crazy. So it, it's like, oh, fuck. 
putting yourself in a hard mode so that you can build up your combo super high real quick. And it's the key to getting a high score is being able to take these bosses down in hyper mode. Which, this is the first level boss I usually would have no problem. Ooh. Ah, fuck me. But here I am, gabbing away, dying like an asshole. I'm just going to keep going because I feel like if it's the arcade and you've invested 100 yen, you're not going to just quit because you died on the first level. Uh. Yep. Oh, uh, yep. Evil Within 2. Heard about that just moments before going live here. Yeah, I, I actually, I didn't play the first Evil Within. I feel that's like something I uh, need to go back and do. I... I don't know if it's aged as well. I've I've heard, I don't know, mixed things about it. But as a big fan of uh, Biohazard 4, Resident Evil 4, anyway, it pretty much looked like a spirited successor to that. Which, if that's the case, is good. But I've heard, uh, yeah, bullets are very sparse, even on a Resident Evil 1 diet of bullets. But sounds good. I want to give it a go. My friends who I trust their opinions on this type of genre have all given me the thumbs up. I think out here, uh, I see it at book off for like less than a thousand yen, like less than 10 bucks for a PS4 version of that. So why I haven't picked it up already. I have no idea. PS4 being region free is nice, but some games, uh, I, I worry about the kanji level. If I really want to enjoy the story. Can speak in Japanese is one thing, but reading and writing with all that kanji is another. So I should probably just uh, quit playing these games and start studying more of that. But I'm not gonna. Well, I am studying more of that, but I'm not gonna quit playing these games. Ooh. So what are you hyped about, E3, this year? What's going on? My, uh... Switch is out in the wild. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, I hope it's not the way it was last year with uh, Nintendo where their booth was only one game. Even though Zelda is an amazing game, I'm still enjoying it. But last year they had uh, their booth dedicated strictly to Zelda. Which, you know, you want to see more than one game, I guess, over. we still got some things uh, for 3DS coming out. I'm sure they'll keep that system pumping with some content for a while uh, as they got a new model of it even coming out but uh, yeah it'll be kind of the cheaper affordable kid system I want to say even though I've enjoyed it for years the I, I'm loving my switch I want to see more stuff for that uh, oh yeah DBZ fighting game wow that looked pretty amazing uh, and this is like years of Dragon Ball Z fighting games the one I've gotten got most excited about Prior to this was a 3DS exclusive, which was a... I don't have Hyper. Uh, developed by Arc System Works of Guilty Gear fame. And this seems to be the where that was going. And now it's on uh, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Ah, fuck. Well, that was embarrassing. And, uh, yeah, it looks to be like a fucking awesome 2D Guilty Gear-ish Dragon Ball Z fighting game. Which, isn't that what we've... Always wanted? Like, oh man. I, I will say my Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, I am less hyped for it than I'd been for every other uh, Marvel vs. Capcom game, I guess. Like, that series was so dear to me. Uh, and even as I slowed down on a lot of, like, Capcom fighters come, like, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and ult I bought that and Ultimate. Uh, enjoyed those games a lot, even for my skill level. But I don't like a lot of the art direction in this one so far. Like, uh... I don't know. I'm, I like seeing Mega Man X right off the bat. I, I really hate the way they did Hawkeye. I know they're focusing more on the Avengers uh, cast right now, which has its obvious reasons. But, you know, yeah, how can you dog, like, the Berserker Barrage and Drill Claws of Wolverine? And I don't know. It's, I, I, I'm... Optimistic, I'm sure it will be fun, but I'm not like hype day one. Got to get this game at the moment, and I've been like that for every Marvel vs. Capcom game up till now. So, and also the gym system, I know it's kind of like we had that in Marvel Super Heroes, the old arcade game, PS1 game. Uh, and I don't know, I never got as into that one competitively, so I don't know if 
people who are really into it really like the gym system, but I don't know. I wonder if this is going to be something like that. Uh, like Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which never really took off. Uh, that one had a similar, like, weird gym system to it. And I don't know, from what I understood, that kind of crippled the game competitively. But, and that should have been such a better crossover, man. Like, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, that was like a big deal. And then we never got Tekken Cross Street Fighter, which was supposedly in development, which was in the Tekken engine. And then they canceled that, but now in the latest Tekken 7, we got Goki, a.k.a. Akuma, in the West as a playable character who looks pretty fucking awesome. So probably be swooping on Tekken 7 here pretty soon. Still expensive, and I don't have a, an arcade stick for PS4 right now. That's the one thing holding me back from pulling the trigger on a lot of fighting games for it. Got, I'm playing currently on a 360 Mad Cats Tournament Edition fight stick, which, uh, again, shoutouts to Markman and RIP Mad Cats, but uh, this is a nice little E3 takeaway one year. Ooh. Fuck. Oh. I bombed. I'm kind of embarrassed. But I did things out of order. See, what I did there was I blew up his wings faster than I should have because then he goes into this Berserker Barrage and you want to really avoid the Berserker Barrage. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I haven't seen anything on the last night yet. I'm going to have to check that out. I've been hearing some buzz. Yep, I will be getting Tekken, and yes, do talk to me soon, and come out to Japan, my man. I want to see you out here. Get your passport in order, first and foremost, if you don't have it already. Fuck. I'm just gonna keep going again. I'm playing arcade style, where I'm uh, not gonna just quit right now. So this game also has some other modes... Uh, I'm playing the original arcade mode, but it has a remixed mode as well I, uh, as a uh, black label, which if you don't know Cave, for most most of their games, they'll they'll do an alternate release of it like uh, that they only release a certain amount of motherboards for. So in the collector's market, they go for quite a bit. But games like Dodon Potch, Black Label, Dodon Potch, Diojo, Black Label, it's the same game, but sometimes uh, amped up, ramped up the difficulty. And sometimes, uh, and mostly just a remix of like bullet patterns and enemy placement. So in a pre-DLC day, this was how they would do it. They would release this for tournaments or exhibition style things to let people try to set high scores. But the 360 versions of all these games, they have it as downloadable content or content included within the game. So Black Label is now a little less elusive. Uh, places like I mentioned before, like Taito Hay, uh, a really famous arcade in Akihabara, Tokyo, uh, that one, they have a floor with, like, every shooter you could think of, and with that, they also have the black label version of almost every shooter, so it's the ultimate museum of shoot-em-ups, and they have, like, every series you could think of. Pretty amazing. You can rent that floor out for an hour, like, you know, birthday Chuck E. Cheese, childhood birthday style, like, bring all my friends, all the pizza and beer, and have free play for one hour on the shooter floor at Taito Hay. Their fighting game floor is equally as impressive. They have like every iteration of every fighting game. Like it's right next to Club Sega too, which Trash the MB will definitely be taking some trips out for that shit. Akihabara is like the mecca. Like if you're a nerd, you gotta pilgrim pilgrimage your way there one point or another in your life. Fuck it, didn't have hyper. Using bombs like an idiot. Military police. MP. Mm. Eh. I'm going to do another run. Just because why not? Here I am. Shooting shit. Shout out to the Pikachu mug. Give me that. Good luck since day one. All right, fuckers, I want to draw your fire over here, make my way to this side, and slowly mow you down. This is the strategy, people. Keep this combo. Uh, already, whatever. All right, well, 
keep going. Yeah, what else is going to be hype at E3? I'm like, I'm trying to think what else I'm like. I know uh, I heard they finally gave it a, a release date for Cuphead, which on the topic of Xboxes, that was probably like the only Xbox One exclusive that really had me excited, but it's totally like fell off my radar. But again, Xbox One's kind of like the only system I don't have. And I really enjoyed the 360 generation where like, again, I, I always kind of been a PlayStation fan more, but in a world where the games were coming out on both systems and uh, Microsoft our uh, Xbox 360 had the better version, uh, you know, the PS3 ports, like Bayonetta, for example, the PS3 version was supposed to be janky and have all these frame rate issues, whereas the Xbox 360 version, like, ran perfectly fine. And I'll never forget on Instagram, I uh, got another account, me and the boys, loving the gamer, loving the gamer, always just gaming stuff here in Japan that I'm posting up, but, uh... Somebody had commented when a Metal Gear Rising had came out. I bought it, of course, day one on 360, and for the same reasons, the X or the PlayStation version was said to be like you know janky or have issues for PS3, and then uh, so I got that one. But somebody had commented like, oh, like something along the lines of like like real gamers don't buy it on Xbox or something like that. And it's just like yeah, well, in a performance-based world, like I'm not gonna throw money down to get the inferior version just because I want to be the cool kid. So I, I bought uh, that generation pretty much everything on 360 as opposed to my PS3, which PS3 still got play, but um, more of my friends were playing on 360 for said reasons of smoothness of games. And yeah, it just, it was funny too that comparing, uh, you know, Trash 3, I'm sure you could chime in on this, but the fucking the competitive scene for fighting games was way different from that to PS3 to 360, just the various networks without crossplay. Odele, joined by Copello up in the house. Copello, good to see you, my man. Copello's a fucking big Destiny gamer too. I know you're hyped for Destiny 2 news at E3 next week, Copello. I know it. I know it. Major shout outs, one of the funniest dudes. In Tokyo, if you get a chance to see that guy live, check him out. Those of you who don't know, my name is TC Inkwell. I uh, rap and have music that uh, you'll hear on the breaks a lot of time, or also check me out on my channel. You'll find my EP fully uploaded on there for your listening pleasure. And uh, I've got some new works coming out right now with my man Takuma the Great. We do a lot of lives with the homie DJ Copello. So if you're out in Shibuya, come check us out. Yokohama, 045. All the way from LA to Yokohama. In Yokohama, LA. And the music you were hearing on the break, too, that was uh, my boys, the Hooligans. I meant to give them a shout out a lot sooner. But uh, yeah, Takuma the Great, his side group that he's in, or his main group, is the Hooligans out here in Japan. That's Hooligans with a Z. They are fucking dope. Just released a new album, Tune Up Holiday. It's, uh... Oh fuck, I got it right here. At the expense of my life, Tune Up Holiday. Check it out. Find it at your Tower Records and on iTunes. I don't know if it's on iTunes US, but... Really good live band album. Uh, super good mix. Like, a nice departure from uh, a lot of their other albums, which are really dope, too. More of the classic boom-bap and hip-hop style, but... Me and Takuma were the Boom Bop Saints. <sighs> Bringing it back with real style. Chopstick Fantasy. Inkwell, Takuma the Great. Come check us out. Check out some new tracks with my man Chikara Manga of Giant Panda Trace Records fame. Big shout outs. Honored to be working with the god right there on some new material. But, yep. <sighs> Excited for a lot of the upcoming Japan events. Tokyo Game Show uh, wasn't that exciting last year. I didn't see too much coming out of it that just was mind blowing. And I gotta say, like as cool as Tokyo Game Show is, and it's always been open to the public on the Saturday and Sunday, which that's a big thing about E3 this year is that it's open to the public to a certain extent. I mean, they sold out of tickets like months ago, but uh, it was more reasonable than it's been in the past to try to get in, I guess. And uh, there's been a lot of controversy about it. E3 is usually a pretty packed place on top of dumping in, what was it like, 
couple thousand people or something more that they're selling tickets to. So, uh, but Tokyo Game Show has been that for years. And I will say, going on Saturday and Sunday, I mean, if it's all you could do, it's all you could do, but it is not for the faint of heart. You think E3 is bad? Man, Tokyo is bad on a Saturday or Sunday anyway, let alone cramming everybody into the fucking show hall convention center. Uh, Makahari, I forget what it's called. But yeah, uh, so if you can, go on the press days, but uh, I believe Thursday and Friday are exclusive to gaming press and media of sorts. Definitely the way to go, and it's still crowded, but nowhere near as bad as Saturday and Sunday. But yeah, Cave, actually, when Xbox had a presence, I, I'm sure they still do Tokyo Game Show, but years ago when they had done Tokyo Game Show, it was the funniest thing. Like, they were just featuring, like, games that, you know, at the time, Microsoft, they made a grab for the J Japan market a bit by securing, well, like, these games were a product of it. Cave, the arcade shooters and such, releasing those exclusively on 360, most of them. Uh, but that, like, Blue Dragon also, uh, you know, artist Akira Toriyama of Dragon Ball, Dragon Quest fame. It was, uh, I think, Mistwalker Studios. They were, like, X-Square Enix developers. But they uh, released Blue Dragon on 360, which you could find it, like, so cheap at every used game store. It was, like, people played it, sold it back. Ah, oh, fuck me. And it was just, uh, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, Microsoft made a big play for the market uh, back then, but now it just, it seems like they're not even trying, which is a little embarioso. Yeah, get tech in, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, yep, shout-outs to Traj3, man, enjoy some E3. Give him a follow on the uh, Instagram for some E3 updates this week. I believe it's, what, at Traj3MB? You could correct us in the... Uh, comments there Traj but definitely check him out as I will be missing E3 this year as well and needed to uh, vicariously live through my friends who are doing it right ah oh, shit okay got them bullets got them bullets so yeah yeah I'm doing pretty awful I'm on uh, level 2 I think I died a couple times there I wasn't really trying you know what I mean but I haven't even placed, like, fifth or anything on here. I've got some scores saved, so I probably have to work a little harder to, like, get get up, you know? Ooh. These games also, which is cool, they feature uh, the 360 versions uh, or, you know, any of the ports, really. Uh, ugh. Like, stage select. So, for example, whereas I play a lot of stage one and two because I don't continue, I, I don't want that my score tainted if I'm doing well. Uh, I could still go and practice on level 3 and 4, and this game gets pretty tough. So I'm going to go for a legit run, like I said I've been trying to do, but I'm going to actually go for a legit run. Yep. Oh, yes, Sumina Sai. Good night, Traj3. I will talk to you here shortly, brother. All right. And if you got any pictures, Traj, of your high scores, shoot them my way. I want to see what your highest was. We used to have, like, you know, because arcade games, they... The high scores reset every time you power down the machine on most of them. Neo Geo's like they had a battery back memory for some high scores for some games, but um, this game we had like a whiteboard that we would just always write the highest score on, uh, and it would you know when you had one that you thought was high enough or what you know if you actually beat that score it got erased. I'm just gonna restart. That was bad. So the, our household had the whole high score challenge going in a, a very analog way too, but. Tragedy 3, you were up there a while. You were up there. I see you. Alright, jiggling my way through these motherfuckers. They call me Jiggles. I never liked it when they used to call me Jiggles. Ah, oh, fuck, I fucked up my combo. It went stale. Over 100, it turns green. Dollar, dollar, bills. Oh... Copello, I'm going to have to get Destiny 2 when it comes out. Again, I've kind of been a holdout on Destiny. I'm not that into first-person shooters, but I like playing games with my friends. So with that, I'll like give a lot of stuff a try that's not necessarily in my realm. But I, I played the demo for Destiny 1, and uh, I liked it. It's got a lot more uh, 
action platforming-ish elements to it, aside from just player versus player. And there's a lot of cooperative modes, so uh, I'm excited the Destiny 2. I'm actually happy that you cannot export your data from the first one into it. It's kind of like a reset point for people like me who was kind of too intimidating to get into Destiny 1 after my friends had been playing it for years because I was never going to be able to, like, you know, be on that level, I guess. So, something I think most companies are aware of with their games when they do a reset and make it so you can't transfer over data. But I've always loved that about games like Pokemon. Like, I have Pokemon on my Sun and Moon cart that have been with me since the Game Boy Advance days, like, which is the last... So, Pokemon as far back as that, you can still keep transferring from game to game. So, I have, like, a team... Teams that are years old. I got Pokemon with funny nicknames that have been, like, just... You know, it's gone full circle. They made a remake for 3DS of... Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, like remakes of the GBA versions of Ruby Sapphire, and I have Pokemon that I transferred to that from the original Ruby Sapphire, which it's just pretty funny that it's gone that far. Oh, again, I wasn't concentrating. I fucked up on the boss a bit, so I'm just going to kind of bomb my way out to reset. Score's not going to be as amazing as it would have been, but we're just going for it. I want to get to level 3, 4, possibly 5. I'm just going to gun it down as consciously or unconsciously as I can alright Copello thanks for dropping by my man back to work with you this fool's DJing on a internet series right now so calls it work but you're just spinning those records motherfucker good job alright alright I got no bombs, that's good. Now I got a hyper though, so I could use that hyper as a one time speeder upper to get the combos building if I want. And this area is not bad actually. You could get a pretty high combo building and then get a B. Give you a nice give you a nice little score boost, but I'm gonna just play it safe. Keep normal for now. Ah. Dancing out of some corners here sometimes. What the fuck? And dancing into some bullets sometimes. Embarrassing. And see, that's the risk. I didn't use the hyper, and now it's gone, and now I'm gone. Mm. Yeah, E3, man. I'm... Oh, fuck. Curious what Sony will have. They're going to really double down on the VR stuff. The VR seems it got a lot of buzz, but uh, I haven't heard as much about it real recently. I didn't pick one up myself. I liked some of the demos I played, but um, I don't know. After playing with the Vive uh, via a friend as well, uh, yeah, it was fucking killer. I played a uh, Space Pirate Trainer. Uh, it was like an amazing high score style game in VR. The technology was amazing. I know PSVR's not quite there to what the Vive is and then with the Vive of course you have to be running a real nice computer and all this to be able to do it but uh, yeah man Vive was pretty amazing so for my buck at the moment I'm wait to get a Vive for VR but also I'm not in a hurry to get VR myself it, it's something I enjoy but already as an adult it's hard enough to get TV gaming time let alone like being in my own goggle world I will say but I will get there. Which also is the reason I... Well, I've always been a big Resident Evil fan. I didn't even play Resident Evil 7. And I'll probably just pick it up and give it a play on normal PS4. But everything I had heard from friends and such, which was VR was just the experience. Like, you know... And I played the demo in VR and it was pretty amazing. So that's where I'm like, ah. Oh, fuck. I'm dying like an idiot. All right, I'm just going to restart this. All right, my coffee's almost done, so I'm going to restart this and go for one final balls-to-the-walls run over here. Yes. Linear shot. Laser. So forgive me, there'll be a little less commentary as I try to get in here and make it bleed. Though I say there'll be less commentary, there most certainly will still be lots of commentary. 
Okay, combo already still. Not good. We're not going for that right now. We're just going to survive and make it up to some levels higher than this. Oh, mini boss asshole, consumerist pig. This is what happens to Earth. This is what happens. Neo Tokyo. So this game does hold up pretty damn well though. Again, released in 2002. It is 15 years old, but I don't know, this generation of games just has aged better than not restart doing one more. Whereas it's hard to go back, I find, and play like early PS1 or uh, like even a lot of N64 games. Just the cruder 3D games, it's really hard to get as into them these days. But yeah, this peak of like 16, 32 bit style like uh, pixel art has just really stayed still highly playable and still has its own artistic direction, which obviously new school developers are trying to recapture with their art direction. As it's safe to say, there's been a retro revival, air quotes. For people like me, it's never gone away. And it's never retro. But I will buy modern systems just to play games like this. So, I mean, again, Cave releasing their shooters on 360 was my biggest reason for getting a 360. I had already had a PS3 at the time, uh, and I just wanted these shooters, and I knew I wasn't going to buy all the arcade boards, and this was the only place to play as good of a port of them, so I was on it. I'm just going to restart one more time, guys. Sorry. Threesies. Threesies, as we call it. Twosies or threesies? Yeah, RJ in the house. Shoutouts to Rio Jr. Laser Rush. Come join us. We do game nights at Laser Rush from time to time, usually on a Monday. Give us a like on Facebook. Just search Laser Rush Motomachi. Very cool bar here in Yokohama. Very gamer friendly. Been doing a lot of board game nights over there lately, which seems like a lot of fun, but I have not made it out yet. Out of my cage, that is. Alright, so I'm not doing that impressive of a display here on it right now, but when I drop that combo, I'm pretty sad on myself. But I just want to stay alive and make it through the fight here. That's the main mission. So I'm, I want to let these guys build up a little bit more so I can get my combo build in, because if I kill them too quickly when they're coming down the screen... I don't have anything to shoot, my combo goes blue, and I got nothing. Uh, see? Blue, times one. Worthless. Nothing. Garbage. And again, this game has one of my favorite combo systems out of them. I think Mushihime-sama, once you learn to play that one, it, it's got a very similar combo system to this. Um, Ketsui is pretty much like... Ketsui came out a year after this one, and... Pretty much is like a Dodon Potch sequel as far as its art direction and like you know tank design and all this, but it has a whole different combo system. So actually, they've released about two versions of Dodon Potch like since this one. There's been uh, Dai Fukatsu, which is like Big Resurrection, and uh, should I even forget what the other one is? They both came out on 360. I see them around. They're not that hard to find. They're not that expensive, but I'm just not as dying to pick them up. I played some of Dai Fukatsu. In the arcade when it came out and I didn't like the combo system as much it, it ramps up the level of difficulty though much like Mushihime sama and games like that Nibara really took cave to the next level of bullet hell uh, you know people I guess were too good at these ones shit I'm just an idiot right now but I'm gonna keep going ooh all right I want to shoot his cannons there we go now make it rain make it rain these stars all right keep it going level two don't unpotch diojo uh it says black label on the side but this is this is not the black label version which i think it, black label might yeah and just 
be on here. I don't need DLC for it. I might give it a go. I know Mish Mushihime Sama Futari, the black label is uh, an extra download uh, DLC. I think it's like 10 bucks, like a thousand yen or something like that. But if you've played enough of original and need something different, it's nice that there's options for remixes. But I miss having the machine at the house, I will say. Having friends around that were always popping on and like when someone beats your high score, it really inspires you to jump on and kick them in the teeth. Mm. Love these tanks. wonder how much all this costs. I mean, I'm one ship, but I'm causing a lot of damage, you know? So this is like attempting make it rain star point moment to get you to stay there and die. They test your greed in these games. Frogmen. Scanners. Sometimes, fuck, you gotta take out the little guys because those stray bullets just come through, throw off your damn rhythm. So I have a hyper, I could try to use it, but I don't think there's any bees around here to really cash in on a combo. So I'll save it for the latter part of the level. This fucker though, even the mini bosses make it rain. Plasma balls. Die. No resurrections for you. <laughs> these are the jokes. All right, I want to use my hyper now. Start building this combo. Got these bees. Make a little lap around. Cash them out. Over 100. That's good. Fuck! Military police. Fuck! All right, sipping coffee slow, so I'm going to do one more. Yeah, I know these games can make you dizzy, but once you're, like, fully adjusted in there, it's, it's the perfect morning coffee game, I swear. Just gets you, like... Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's an afternoon show here in Japan. It's late night for y'all in California, I know. But thank you for tuning in anyway. We're going to do one last run on here as I enjoy the coffee and I feel more in the rhythm. But I'm going to continue uh, my exploration of cave shooters here throughout the week. I'll come live again uh, Thursday afternoon or, or uh, Thursday night California time and uh, Friday afternoon Japan time. Not sure which one I'll jump to next since I'm not going chronologically at the moment. Again, last time we played Ketsui. Now I'm playing Dodon Poch Daiojo, which this game came out a year before Ketsui in 2002. 2003 was Ketsui. I think. Mushihime Sama was maybe 2006. Also got Guwange, which was like 1999 or 2000. Got that downloaded on here. Really great game that made its way to the US uh, store, Microsoft store as well, which highly recommend a download of. Fuck. Guwange. Ah, just fuck it. Just keep going. Final run. Don't got it in me to restart it again. But other than Cave 2, there's a good little uh, home of shooters on Xbox 360. I believe, like, R-Type had gotten a release. Um, trying to think what else. I know the Xbox Live Arcade is actually, it was better than not. There was a lot of good classics on there. Um, and I like that Xbox is going more forward with their backwards compatibility. I mean, a Sony executive, which PS4 still, you can't play PS3 games uh, or even PS2 or PS1 games. And I'm not hurting on those as much, but there's a lot of PS3 games that I'm uh, shocked. Like, my PS3 broke down. I left it back in the States. And I've got a lot of games for it that I can't even play on my PS4 still, which that's a huge disappointment. And, like, I would think even just for their virtual console, it would be easy to get those games running on a PS4. Like, I... It's unbelievable that I still can't play Castlevania Symphony of the Night on PS4. But such is the case. Alright, fuck you. Bombing you out. Alright, pitiful score for the first level, but again, I'm just going to go forward with it. Doing this final run to make it rain. Mumblebees.
Yeah. Yeah. Clover, I wonder what, what are you looking forward to for E3? Any big announcements you're waiting for? Let me know if there's something you're excited about. I know you're a, much more of a PC gamer, which it's always good to hear about what's exciting on that front, as it's a world I don't follow quite as much. But even on uh, PS4, I don't know what i um, excited for on it. Last year, it was a big, like, God of War. Um, I believe the game is like Horizon. Kind of a open world game about robots taking over. I believe that got released already. Again, it's been a great era to be a gamer. There's just so many good games out right now, and it's hard to even keep up. Like, my wallet definitely can't, but... Again, uh, I know ARMS comes out real soon on Switch. I'm liking what I see of that, but I'm not like day one, gotta buy that. I'll see how it goes. But again, Splatoon was very much the same way for me where I, I had Splatoon completely off my radar uh, despite having and loving my Wii U. Uh, then I finally played it in an event, like Evo I think it was, like right after its release. And it was fucking really fun and I immediately got into it me and a couple other friends started like a team doing a lot of online play and then other friends from Japan everybody was playing it Clover out there I know he's a pretty avid good Splatooner so I give him a nod right there but I'm really excited for Splatoon too that'll come out in July that'll be a day one purchase for me and being on a system like Switch I think will be perfect for it have the option of playing local multiplayer and then online as well, like, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm a convert to Splatoon completely. Oh, I should have been doing that the whole time. I'm an idiot. Dropping my score like an asshole, man. Fuck. This was going for the bees. I got trapped in the storm. All right, so I got max bombs. I might use them to get... Yep, got to check the news. They haven't made any big announcements yet. They just had a Microsoft press conference, which doesn't really matter to us in Japan, but... Impending, lots of news coming. Check Twitter, next couple of days. Ooh. Alright, fuck this guy. Now, he goes into form two of patterns. Oh, my goal is to get to level 3. So here I go. Get the hyper. Go to level 3. Got no lives left. But I got a hyper. I think maybe I have one more bomb left. But this is where the game really starts to ramp up in difficulty. Like, boom, boom. Pretty exponentially. Mm. Yep. Splatoon 2. I'm all about it. I'm day 1. Someone's got a birthday near then. So might have to get yourself a little something nice there. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. So I thought I had a bomb, but I just pretty much put it into harder mode for all these bullets that are now coming at me. I'm gonna survive. If I break that... Oh, I got an extra life because I broke 10,000. All right. Ah, fuck. And I used it. Now I got bombs, so I'm gonna use some bombs when I get in this pinch. Ooh. These fucking guys. Ugh. Oh. Oi! What a waste. I'm embarrassed to be bombing it out like this, but. Ooh. It also resets your combo counter when you bomb, so. Oh, and I got no bombs for the mini boss. Crab man. So I just gotta dance. I could get a hyper though. Fuck! MP, military police, max power. Well, shit. My digits are hurting, so I'm gonna take a, a breather on this. Don't unpotch Dio Joe. I'll probably do a re exploration of it here soon and check out some of the further levels. Alright, I got second place. Not complete garbage. Even though first place is also me. But, again, zero at the end of the score, meaning no continues, but not a bad one. So, anyway, 
My name has been TC Inkwell, a.k.a. Tony Inkwell Conti, a.k.a. The Cave Digger, as I keep digging and exploring into these cave games and uh, putting myself through bullet hell so that you can join me as well. But uh, give me a subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube or uh, Twitch. Give me a follow at TC Inkwell on the Instas and the Twitters. And keep gaming safe, folks, because we have to be alive as we explore the cave collection even further. Signing off. Love of the Gamer. Happy E3 week. Peace.